I think I fell in love with songwriting. And so that kind of, I became addicted to that process of trying to find a way to say something differently. The funny part is when you said that, I was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be dating. Uh, as an artist, for me at least, to add in a part of the story, which is, this is really hard, but that's why it's so rewarding. Tuesday episode of Outdated. Have you ever wondered what it's like to date a country music star? Or what it's like for a country music star to date other people? How about what inspires musicians to write love songs that inspire the rest of the world? Today we're answering all of that and more with my friend Spencer Crandall, who is one of my favorite new country music artists on the scene from the last few years. But first, I want to thank our sponsors that helped to make Outdated possible. We are so grateful for you guys. First and foremost, our headline sponsor, Public Square. Across this country, Americans are discovering that if we want to change this nation, we have to change the way the marketplace works. Woke corporations are seeking to divide us, big banks are freezing the accounts of people that disagree with them politically, and our supply chain is actively dependent upon countries that are actively working against our values. It's time for a change, and that change starts with you and your wallet. That is why I am so proud to be partnering with Public Square, the largest ever directory of freedom-loving businesses our nation has ever seen. Public Square is the first ever app to connect freedom-loving Americans with their local community and businesses in their community that share their values. Whether you want to support a restaurant that only buys from local farms, a coffee shop that took a stand against COVID mandates, or even a bank that would never cancel you for your political views, Public Square is your guide. Just download the Public Square app from the App Store or Google Play, create a free account, and begin your search. You can also list your business for free if you're a business owner so that your local community can connect with you and help support your values. Download Download that app today. I can tell you it has changed my life. I absolutely love Public Square. That's Public SQ. Thank you so much, Public Square. We love you and we're so grateful for your support. I actually originally saw Spencer perform um, when we were students at Colorado State University. I think he had just graduated and he was doing a performance at a sorority philanthropy event. I was not in a sorority, I was in student government, but somehow ended up at this particular event for a student government thing. And I remember watching him perform thinking, oh my gosh, this guy is so talented beyond anything I've ever seen from somebody who hasn't signed a record label or moved to Nashville or actually made it on the country music scene. Obviously I knew he would do huge things and here we are a few years later and Spencer has set a totally new tone for what success looks like in the country music industry. If you guys are unfamiliar with who Spencer is, you're living under a rock because he has very successfully put his name out there to be one of the most successful new artists in the country music scene. He's got over 200,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, over five and a half million career streams on Spotify, and has been number one on the iTunes country charts, featured on all of the new music, new boots uh, playlists on Spotify, by Amazon, Apple, on Sirius XM, on the highway, everything. I mean, you guys name it, he is there and his music is there. What's really interesting about Spencer is he didn't take the specific sign with a record label path um, that normally musicians end up taking in order to become successful and go on tour and sell albums. He actually specifically utilized social media to help him get there completely independently and now has gone on his own headline tour last fall is opening for somebody this spring but has amassed a following of several million people across social media platforms namely tiktok where he currently has over 2.2 million followers and his songs about love and commitment and what real love is supposed to look like are resonating with millions upon millions of people on the internet spencer we are so inspired by you and we are so excited to welcome you to the show so please join me in welcoming spencer crandall spencer you are one of my favorite new country artists on the country music scene and i know many other people feel exactly the same way and I actually saw you perform long before you were being played on Sirius XM and Spotify and Apple Music. But what can you say your journey looked like to become a successful artist that's being played on the radio and going on tour and selling out concert tickets for? Well, thank you. First of all, that's just so sweet. And I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, the, the journey is crazy. So um, 
we were talking before we got on really quickly just about how we both went to CSU. And before I went to Colorado State, I went to go play some football at Colorado Mesa University, which is a small D2 uh, in Colorado. And that was my dream. That was my big goal. I get to college and pretty much immediately have two pretty big uh, shoulder surgeries, one on each shoulder. And so doctors were like, please stop hitting grown men at full speed so that we can, you know, salvage your upper body. And so I just didn't, I didn't end up playing football like I thought I would. And I had no idea what to do. And I was, you know, sad and bored and kind of just like in a dark place. And I turned to music, just super naturally gravitated towards picking up the guitar, learning some chords, learning some covers, writing songs. And I think I fell in love with songwriting. And so that kind of, I became addicted to that process of trying to find a way to say something differently. And then I moved to Nashville man, like August, 2016. So I'm coming up on two, six years. Goodness. Um, yeah. And the journey has been, you know, I really have bet on the internet really heavily. I've always really believed in the power of even before TikTok was around like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And so I've kind of come up in that era, I think, especially as a country artist, it's been kind of a different path from a lot of my peers. A lot of my peers went straight to the record labels or straight to some of the more conventional or traditional paths. And so I like the weird path that I've been on, which has kind of always been this odd way of finding my way to where I am. I'm glad you brought up social media because I think that's what really sets you and a bunch of other people in your generation of country music apart from that traditional sign with a record label, put out an album and kind of go from there set path that we've seen in the past. TikTok is easily your most successful platform. How did you decide you wanted to just make TikTok videos or use your songs as audios on TikTok to help you blow up as an artist? Yeah, I I just have always, like I said, really believed in power on the internet. And so when TikTok came around, I remember like in high school, Vine was a thing and I was too nervous to try it. And I remembered kind of like regretting it a little bit, being like, oh man, I should have tried you know, because now that it's over, all those videos would have been gone anyway. So you, you just would have had fans or whatever. And I was like, man, should have done that. <laughs> 2020 hindsight. TikTok comes around and I kind of immediately judge it as like, you know, I'm not a 13 year old girl who dances in her room. So this isn't for me. But the reality was that it's just another place. It's just another um, platform for eyeballs and ears and hearts to go to and seek out music. And so I started to see other people utilizing it in a really different, cool way. And my sister was a part of that. She was like, I think you should get on this app. And so I found it relatively early. It had just switched from like Musical.ly to TikTok, I think. And it was right before the pandemic. I would say the summer of 2019, I hopped on and just posted a few videos. And I saw the algorithm was so different from anything else. At the time, I was incredibly frustrated with Instagram specifically because the algorithm was doing the opposite where they really wanted you to pay for your reach. They really wanted you to pay for your own audience. And that was so frustrating to me. Then TikTok came around and I posted a few things and I would have a thousand followers and get a hundred thousand views. And I was almost confused. I was like, what is happening? And it's because that algorithm is so democratizing. It's really just a free market where it allows people to decide what's cool. And it pushes the people who are doing well. It's just kind of this like really cut and dry black and white thing. Your video gets likes, it gets more likes. Your video doesn't get likes, it, it dies out, which we, I have plenty of those as well. But around that time, I just doubled down. I told my manager in the fall of 20, or 2019, I'm gonna go super hard at this app. Then the world shut down and I was kind of already waiting there. Luckily, you know, in a lot of regards of like, I had really dedicated a lot of time to this thing and was starting to figure it out everybody was stuck in their houses scrolling on this app and I had five to seven videos ready every single day. And so a lot of it was original music based. A lot of it was like these mashups or these, you know, me just being an idiot in my apartment being trapped. So it, it was kind of this, I found this moment in time where I had the time to do it and it was the, the real attention was there. And so it was this little perfect storm. And luckily I had, you know, messed around on Twitter and Facebook and all these things before so I had a little bit of a knowledge of what works, what doesn't work. And yeah, it's just super lucky. And it's, it's really changed my life. It's been incredible. 
A few of your songs in particular have really, really gained traction through TikTok, especially My Person, which I believe is probably your most popular song to date. Um, which, What was the inspiration behind that song and what really drives and inspires you to write love songs? Yeah, that's a great question. So My Person, you know, I'm not with this person anymore, but at the time it was like the first time I'd really felt like... Um, you know, I've been in like relationships in like high school or early college and it was fun, but I never kind of could see past the fog of where we are like, oh, we're in high school or in college. And this is the first girlfriend I had that when I moved to Nashville, I had started to plant some roots and I could see us planting roots together. And so I had heard people talking about like, um, you know, that's my blah, blah, blah person. That's my, um, it was kind of a starting to become a thing in culture. And so I just kind of flagged that in my head and wrote it down as a note, my phone, as, you know, songwriters do, I guess. You just hear something like, oh, I haven't heard somebody say that that way. I brought it into a writing session with my buddies, Kelly and um, Lalo. And then we just kind of wrote it. And it was one of those things like in the moment, we're like, whoa, this feels really special. And again, we wrote that at the end of 2019. I put it out at the end of 2019 and it did fine. But then throughout all of 2020, I just saw that that song reacted so well. I think a lot of people really related and, and connected to that story of like, it is that fairy tale moment of when you finally feel like that's the person you love, that's the way that you want to say it. And that's just kind of that cool, like perfect storm moment. So it really changed my life. I mean, I still to this day, I get hundreds of videos every weekend of people first dancing and engagement videoing and all the things to it. So it's pretty incredible. I, I, part of your question was like where I write love songs from and a lot of it's experience. I think a lot of it, like I have a song called made as well. I have a song called kept every vow, which is about my parents. And so even if I haven't lived it, it's something that I want to live or it's something that I'm like trying to be better at in relationships made is a lot of that. Uh, the hook is like soulmates aren't found, they're made. And so it's about building something together and not giving up and fighting for this love that you really believe in. And so, I've been bad at that in my life. And so that's a love song, almost like as a reminder and a pin in my brain of like, come back to this. Um, but all of it's from, you know, real experience. I, I genuinely love writing songs, but I really love writing songs about stuff that I've lived and stuff that I'm going through. So it just, I think it just plays more authentically and people can kind of feel that. What's it like dating in the music industry as an artist? Is there a whole nother level of challenges we don't know about? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the funny part is when you said that, I was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be dating. Um, <laughs> it's, I love what I do. And my, you know, my red flag is that I, I'm kind of a workaholic. I love this process and all this stuff. So there's a lot of times I'll put my head down and I won't pick it up for six months. And someone will be like, who are you seeing? And I was like, like, as like a therapist, like I, I it doesn't even register in my head. So, um, I would say it's just tough time wise. We were talking earlier about touring and like I've been on tour. I did a headlining tour in the fall and I'm opening um, for somebody this spring, which has been incredible, but I can count on, you know, the number of hands, the weekends that I've been home. And then you're, when I am home, my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is so packed because I'm trying to fit in a full work week into three days because I have so much other admin stuff and all that. So really it's just incredibly uh well, camera moves. um it's it's incredibly hard to find um please hold goodness gracious that's okay there we go perfect <laughs> it's incredibly hard to find the time and i think i'm in a season of life where I, I enjoy my independence and i enjoy keeping my head down some of the tougher things are definitely like you know you have to have somebody who really understands what you're doing. You know, I, I am, I am getting a ton of messages. I'm taking a lot of pictures with people and it's not this like romantic thing. It is this like fan connection and it can come off very flirty or very like, um, you know, you, you really have to have somebody who understands the, like, this is a part of your job and it's not a normal job. Most people, you know, when they're emailing their coworkers, it's like, great. I'll see you at lunch, but it's very like black and white. And for me, I have messages. I have people, I have 
people saying they love me and I say I love you back and it's not this like so there has to be a lot of trust maybe is what I'm getting at yeah and that's something that I have to earn which I'm happy to do um, but it's just a very different you know there's not a lot of people who meet four to seven hundred people of the opposite sex and take pictures with them every night and they're gone a lot and it's it comes with a lot of trust and I think um that's just one of the extra little barriers that I didn't really think about when I got into this. Cause I was like, Oh, you know, dude, just, it'll be normal. But because I didn't date someone from the beginning, someone's coming in in the middle, like right where I am. So I'm so used to it. And of course in my brain, I'm like, this is so normal. But when somebody gets introduced to it, it's a lot. Like it's definitely not, um, it's not your run of the mill relationship. And it just comes with these weird little challenges I could have never foreseen the macro level where do you think the music industry and what they're selling to consumers may be missing the mark on relationships do you think love songs that are coming out of nashville and in country music or even just music in general are misleading people as to what real love might be like that's a good question i mean look am i the guy who should be giving out love advice no but i'll say this like i have a song called made and I have a song called My Person. And they are the, the flip side of the coin, which is the fairy tale moment. And then made, My Person is the fairy tale moment and Made is how to get there. And so as an artist, I thought it was really important to kind of pull the curtain back a little bit and be like, look, I love My Person. And if, you're da- if your first dance is My Person, you don't want anything about there about in the song about Oh, we fight, but we get through it. You just want to talk about that fairy tale moment. You are my person and let's, let's do this. And so I think those songs are important and we should, you know, value those for what they are. I think it's nice uh, as an artist, for me at least, to add in a part of the story, which is, this is really hard, but that's why it's so rewarding. And so if you can get through the fights at 2am, if you can get through the long distance, if you can get through all these things, then that makes it so much more worth it. And, you know, maybe there's not this perfect person out there waiting for you. That was the kind of, it's not a lie, but it's the thing that I bought into that I think has really changed in my later 20s is like, I genuinely believe that there's just this person out there and they're just going to be waiting. And once I found them, it was going to be easy and it was just going to like click. And not that that can't happen, but I do think the reality of a great relationship, and I've seen this through my parents, I've seen this through countless of my friends who have really healthy marriages it's, it's a lot of hard work. It's not like grueling and terrible, but it's, you really have to be so intentional. And I think, um, and I think that's what made is about. And I think it's our job as artists to tell our truth. And one of my truths at least is that I really believe that marriage and, and monogamy, if you so choose it, it's an incredible thing, but it's, it's a, it comes with a cost and a price and you just got to be willing to pay it. And you got to, kind of get your hands dirty and get through some of that gritty stuff to really have the payoff of the my person moment. So I, I like that there's both my person and made. And as far as the industry, you know, I, I think every artist is in a different place of their life to tell their story. But I think I can only speak for myself personally, where I think it's important to kind of like on this next album I'm working on, I'm talking a little bit more about mental health. I'm talking a little bit more about workaholic ism and all that, that stuff where, where I'm kind of trying to point at, yes, I love my job, but this isn't a fairy tale. Yes, I love love, but it's not a fairy tale. And I think that's, at least for me, when I hear stories like that, I feel seen and I feel heard. Because sometimes when I watch a Disney movie, I'm like, that's incredible, but that's just not real life. And so when somebody lets me into their heart with vulnerability and, and the realness of, and the messiness of life, that's where I can kind of dig in and and really relate to them. So I try to do the same as an artist. I love that so much. And I think that authenticity and vulnerability piece is really what made you successful as a creator on social media, but also carries through in your music. That's so unique, I think, for so many artists because people do want the fairy tale moment. They want to be told everything's great all the time, but it's not great all the time. Uh, And that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. One of my favorite songs of yours is called Good Thing, actually, and it highlights all of the areas of your life that could have gone a different way, but ended up bringing you to where you are right now. And a breakup is one of those things that you mention in that song. 
I feel like modern culture especially harps on breakups as like the end of the world that you have to mourn the loss of this person for so many months or even a year and it's so hard to put yourself back out there and you lose yourself when you lose this other person basically when in reality we could choose to look at it from a completely different vantage point that maybe that just wasn't the person that God intended for you maybe that direction of your life just was different from where you're supposed to be going and what your path actually looks like. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you're spot on. I, I, I wrote that song, Good Thing. It's, it's really like this little chapter book story of my life and these moments where in the darkest of my times, I couldn't see the light, but it was there. And I don't know necessarily exactly what that light is, but it kept calling me to it. And that's kind of this beautiful part of life is, is that with, when you look back, it kind of feels like there's this little guiding hand of like, oh yeah, you, I wasn't supposed to play football. I wasn't supposed to marry my high school sweetheart. I wasn't supposed to do that stuff because I really like where I am right now. And that's, that's one of the lines in the chorus. It's a good thing it didn't work out because I wouldn't be where I am right now. And that, I really believe that. I, I'm so grateful for the bumpiness and the messiness and the, the heartbreak because it really, one, has really informed me and sharpened me into the person that I want to be. I think adversity in the moment really sucks. But when we look back at why we're tough or why we get through things, it's because we've actually gone, we've been through it and we, and we survived. And I think our brain goes, okay, we can do that. We can do it again. Or I've done this, so I can definitely do this, you know? And I think um, I'm, I'm lucky enough, I'm privileged enough to have a lot of incredible people around me. So that makes it a lot easier. And I think the the breakup thing is really tough because when you're in it, the last thing you want to hear is like, you just need time. You're like, shut up. <laughs> like, don't tell me there's nothing that will heal me. But the reality is that um, every relationship I've had, and I think I've also redefined, like, obviously marriage is my goal personally, but it might not be for everybody. But that's something that I'm really interested in. But I've also redefined breakups as instead of, it, it failed, it could still be a successful long-term relationship that just didn't happen to end in marriage. And that's okay. You can learn a ton. You can still love that person. You can love the memories you made with them. Um, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be this thing that ruined your life and sucked all the you know, fun out of everything. It can be this thing that we had amazing memories. We became better humans. I learned a lot, something I wouldn't do, something I would do again. I'm going to take that and move forward with it. And I think that's, I'm trying to redefine these things in my brain, especially something like failure or coming up short, just as learning as, oh, well, now I'm better because of this. And, and the more that I do that, it's very hard. It's way easier said than done. But I think it's, it's really growing me and shaping me and trying to point me towards the, the man I'm trying to be, I guess. At a large 30,000 foot view of what people in our country are going through right now who may be millennials or the older tale of Gen Z, where do you think our culture on dating and relationships may be going wrong with those definitions? Like putting so much pressure on a successful relationship, whatever that looks like, making sure that you're always going towards that specific goal. What can we do differently to help people find contentment and joy in the moment where they're at and redefine some of those things in their head? Yeah, a couple things that come to mind because that's a, that's a fascinating question. And again, like, it's going to look different for everybody, but I'll just talk about my experience because I think I've really changed a, a lot of the ways that I look at these things. And one of the ways um, is definitely, like I said, redefining what a successful long-term relationship is. It doesn't necessarily have to be marriage for it to be great and add value to your life. I think that's part of that. I think taking the pressure off of my partners to be this thing, to be this like Jesus-like figure that will come and save me and take away my pain or take away like it really needs to be I've worked so much on myself and I have this really full glass and I'm overflowing and this person who's also worked really hard and and built this life that they love they're overflowing and so you're just pouring into each other and it's this beautiful thing and sometimes somebody you know is like at 50 percent, so the other person pours in and it's it is this like push and pull rather than you know in my younger years as a immature relationship goer I really wanted somebody to come along and I genuinely thought like the anxiety might go away or the, 
what I, and it, it, it for me at least that's never been the reality the reality is that can be an amazing person but they don't have to be also you know just this perfect go down the line like they love the same restaurants as me we love the same adventures we love like i've really tried to take the pressure off of any of my partners and be like i love you for you i'm not trying to change you and if i need a little bit more adventure and you don't love that i can also have friends I can also have family. I can also have my career. You don't have to be this like one size fits all, all, you know, encompassing thing over my life. So maybe that I, I'd be curious to, to ask a lot of people. Cause I think a lot of people struggle with this. You know, we grew up with Disney. We grew up with these movies and these songs that said it was going to be perfect. That's talked about soulmates. And that's really why I wrote made because I, I genuinely thought that there's going to be this person that just like, took the weight off my shoulders and that's not their job. I think two, a successful relationship is almost easier to find as two humans who work on themselves and are willing to have the most uncomfortable conversations. Those are the people who make it the people who aren't honest with each other or themselves and who are expecting someone to come along and save them or change them. Um, that seems to be at least in my experience, where it goes wrong. So, you know, I'm just one guy who's, you know, in his back room wearing a hat, but I feel like that seems to be a piece of that is expectation. You take some of the weight. If you take some of the expectation off your partner, I, I think it can be helpful and really focusing on yourself so that you have so much more to give. Love that so much. And I totally agree. I think sometimes we look for the other half of a relationship to complete you or to turn you into the best version of yourself somehow when a lot of that comes down to you at the end of the day. Last question is a fun one. What are you hoping to have out of your own dating and relationship experience? And do any of your songs really highlight what that might look for you? Yeah, I would say, you know, I definitely look for that kind of I would say my person, one of the, my favorite lines, which I've felt this before is my know when you know best friend. And it's that like, you know, let's just go there, right? Like you can be wildly romantically interested in somebody. You could be physically so attracted to them. You could have sexual chemistry out of the, out of this world. And that's great. But that's like 8%. That's super high. It's like 2% of a relationship. And the reality is like, especially if marriage is your goal, I'm talking to myself, like if marriage is my goal, the reality is you're just doing life together. And so that is more just like being with someone you love to be with. It should be your best friend. And so to me, that's like somebody who makes me laugh, somebody who we just, it just feels like the conversation never dies. And, and we love, I love, and this is not for everybody. So this is definitely just a me thing. Like I love a good intellectual conversation and or can get a little debatey in like a really respectful way where I just love the the swapping and challenging of ideas and I love to be wrong I love to, to learn and so somebody who is constantly kind of working on themselves and and asking big questions about themselves and myself I, I find that like I gravitate towards that really easily and then just somebody who's funny I, I love you know roasting each other and all that stuff so it's just that when you know, you know, best friend thing. And it's such a, as cheesy as this is, like you can't really, even when you start to define it, it's such a feeling. And as humans, it's, it's such a frustrating part of being this little, you know, monkey who uses the internet where I can tell you what I want, but it's, it is just this deep knowing. And so I hold on to that with a lot of hope that just when I know, I will know. And it's not this thing that I have to stress about. And it, a lot of it's out of my control. And, you know, I'm not home a lot. So that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer, thank you so, so much for joining us on Outdated and talking about your inspiration behind love songs. Where can people follow you, find you, listen to your music and keep up with everything you're working on? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was awesome. Um, just at Spencer Crandall on all the things. I'll be there. Give me a Google or, a, you know, if you're still on MySpace or Napster, whatever you use, whatever <laughs> the kids are using. Whatever the kids are using these days. Awesome, Spencer. Thank you so much. And we will go listen to your music right now. <laughs> I am blown away.
I love Spencer for a variety of reasons. His music is phenomenal. But what I really love about him is that he's embraced this total authenticity that is so lacking in the music industry, in the content creator industry, online. He is the definition of what you see is what you get. And I think his music really exposes that as well. He writes from the heart about what he's gone through, about what he dreams of in a relationship, uh, and not always the easy fairy tale wonderful parts either. So I think Spencer is really just going to the moon with his career. I'm sure he's going to become even more successful than he already is. And I hope you guys enjoyed hearing his perspective on where we may be going wrong in dating and relationship culture, but importantly, where we can go next to fix it. Don't forget, you guys can find Spencer on social media at Spencer Crandall. Crandall is C-R-A-N-D-A-L-L. -L. You can listen to his music on Spotify, Apple, pretty much anywhere you can listen to music. Uh, but just go show him some love because he's really charting a new course for the next generation of successful, exciting musicians who are making their name known on the scene. And we love seeing a truly authentic, wonderful young man chart that course for everyone. Before we go, we have one more sponsor to thank. Thank you so much to Makeup America for helping to make Outdated possible. You guys know I've done a lot of work with Makeup America in the past, including helping them create the first ever patriotic palette with eyeshadows and blush and bronzer, but they're most well known for their lipstick and nail polish products. Everything made by Makeup America is made right here in the United States and is paraben free, GMO free, cruelty free, you name it. And they have a portion of their proceeds go back to supporting other freedom loving small businesses that make their products right here at home in the United States. Go show them some love, head to their website, follow them on social media, and don't forget you can use code the Isabel Brown for a discount on your next order. Thank you, Makeup America. We will see you guys next week for another episode of Outdated.